And I will talk about definitions of Messianic Jew. So again, starting with David Stern, he says that a Messianic Jew is a person who was born Jewish or converted to Judaism, who is a genuine believer in Yeshua, and who acknowledges his Jewishness. And then a couple pages later, he says, this includes those who call themselves Hebrew Christians, but a narrower definition would exclude them by calling Messianic Jews only those who wish to live a demonstratively Jewish lifestyle, that is, a Messianic life within the framework of Torah. I personally think it is a mistake to confer the term Messianic Jew on just any believer in Yeshua whose parents happen to be Jewish. All right, so again, there's a lot there, but just kind of quickly, he first gives a broad definition that he says includes Hebrew Christians, but then he narrows it and gives a more tight definition that he then says excludes Hebrew Christians and constricts it to Messianic Jews who do live a demonstratively Jewish lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And then he pushes against the idea that we began with in saying that a Messianic Jew isn't somebody who just is a Jewish person and believes in Yeshua. It takes something a little bit more than that. So then the next scholar I'd like to mention is Dr. Daniel Jester. He says that Messianic Jew is referring to Jews who follow Jesus and maintain a loyalty to their Jewish heritage. So that seems pretty in line with what we've seen so far. What do you have, Jonathan? Yeah, so uh, I have Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum, and he says, that, he says this, What then is a Messianic Jew? If a Jew is a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which we believe to be the proper definition, then a Messianic Jew is a Jew who believes that Yeshua Jesus is his or her Messiah. By faith, Messianic Jews align themselves with other believers in Yeshua Jesus, whether Jews or Gentiles, but nationally they identify themselves with the Jewish people. A Messianic Jew therefore acknowledges that he is both a Jew and a believer. If a Jew accepts baptism solely to lose his identity as a Jew, he is by no means to be considered a Messianic Jew. He is a renegade, a traitor, and an apostate. A Messianic Jew is proud of his Jewishness. He is also proud of his faith in the Messiahship of Yeshua Jesus. He's kind of highlighting that in the, in the past, for, for centuries, those Jews who accepted Yeshua as the Messiah, what they were doing was they were converting from Judaism into Christianity, and in the process, they gave up their Jewish identity. Now, he wants to say that those people should not be considered Messianic Jews. He doesn't view the Messianic Jew as responsible or obligated to continue to live his life um, in practicing and observing Torah. Uh, he, he, his view is that the Torah was abolished. So these are issues. These are kind of the nuances um, reading these definitions of what these scholars are saying is a Messianic Jew. And this would be uh, different than, say, um, uh, Dr. Juster's view or Dr. Stern's view when it comes to tor Torah observance. But, yeah, that, that's, that's how he would understand a Messianic Jew. Um, yeah, and Eric, if you have anything to add to that, that that'd be great. Yeah, just so with that, just keep in mind that with Frechtenbaum, we agree Yes, Messianic Jew is proud of his Jewishness, but where we would differ is what that exactly entails. So for him, it doesn't necessarily entail a Jewish lifestyle, observing Torah, a responsibility to observe Torah, as we saw, you know, Stern and Juster and previous definitions mm -hmm. kind of either said that explicitly or hinted at it. So that's where he has kind of that's where his nuance lies in the midst of all of these other definitions we've, we've shared with you. For sure. So the next Messianic Jewish scholar I'll quote is Dr. Richard Harvey again. He says the term Messianic Jew was introduced at the beginning of the 20th century and became prominent in the 1970s as the preferred self-designation of those Jewish believers in Jesus who not only asserted their Jewish identity, but also actively engaged in the formation of Messianic fellowships, congregations, and synagogues. Now, yeah, there, there is a lot I like about this definition, and that is that uh, he's he's talking about the understanding that these Messianic Jews, the ones that he understands to be a Messianic Jew, are those who are actively engaged in the formation of Messianic fellowships, congregations, and synagogues. Um, really, the synagogue is the place where a Jew 
a Messianic Jew is able to live out his Jewish life, following the festivals, the feasts, observing Shabbat, um, uh, growing in a community of other Jews, you know, learning Torah, all, all of these things are able to be accomplished within the synagogue. So um, I think that's good. I also think it's good that he highlighted um, kind of the history of Messianic Jew and that it was first introduced at the beginning of the 20th century, which which we'll get into later in this video. Um, so yeah, I think I think there's a lot we can learn, a lot to gain from uh, Dr. Harvey's definition. Right. So the next one is Dr. David Rudolph, and he says, Consequently, today many people use the term Messianic Jew to refer to any Jewish believer in Yeshua, whereas the historic term connotes a Jew who believes in Yeshua and continues to live as a Jew as a matter of covenant, calling, or national duty before mm -hmm. God. So I really like this statement here. He alludes to the historic term, which is something that you know we'll get into soon. Mm -hmm. But his use of the word or is very nuanced, I think. So whereas in the UMJC statement, it says like as a matter of covenant responsibility, you know, that's where our motivation for observing Torah lies. But Dr. Rudolph, he's acknowledging that some Messianic Jews, they're observing Torah, you know, with much fervency and joy and passion, some as a matter of covenant, others with an understanding of it being a calling on their lives and others as viewing it as a national duty before God to maintain, you know, like Jewish continuity and stuff like that. So whereas the UMJC does have this kind of ideal prescription and aim where kind of the uniform motivation is to observe Torah as a matter of covenant, Dr. Rudolph's definition of Messianic Jew does seem to be more descriptive and comprehensive in that when it comes to, you know, any Messianic Jew who you may meet, chances are they fall in one of these three categories of covenant calling or national duty before God as a motivation for observing Torah. <laughs> 